um, call the special town meeting to order. It's, we have recording started, et cetera. So good evening and welcome to the 2020 special town meeting being held virtually by way of the ZPATO research voting platform. For procedural guidance, we're going to look to the bylaws of the town of Arlington, as well as to town meeting time. Please remember to abide by our 20, by our 48 hour rule. All substitute motions and substantial amendments to motions must be submitted electronically to me no later than 48 hours prior to we're going to hear that article. So if we're going to talk about it Wednesday, you get it to me today. Um, <clears throat> and there'll be very few exceptions to this rule. As you can see, we got some amendments in today. We accepted those because it's the first night of the meeting. And the um, problem is we do not have the ability to get paper to anyone. So we have to get everything to you electronically. Out of consideration to your fellow town meeting members and to allow a full debate, keep your remarks concise and brief as possible so that all members have a fair opportunity to speak. This is especially true in a virtual town meeting. If you have been said once, don't feel the need to say it again. After the debate, I'll confirm that the voting portal is ready with the display control of Mr. Korowski and then declare the voting is open. You should navigate to your voting portal, click one for yes, two for no, and three for abstain, and then click cast your vote. Abstentions are not votes and they do not count in any manner. If you're unable to vote for any reason, navigate back to the Zoom portal and use the raise hand feature in Zoom in order to get my attention. If you can't do that and you have to still vote, I'm gonna give you a telephone number to call. We will take your vote verbally and we'll enter it into your screen. So why don't you write this phone number down 781-316-3071. I'm going to repeat that. 781-316-3071. That's uh, Ms. Brazil's telephone number. It'll ring on her desk. It'll ring on her cell phone at home. And she'll take your vote and she'll advise us live over the Zoom platform what your vote is. And Mr. Kowalski will enter it on your behalf. <clears throat> We have already taken our attendance vote. That's our quorum call, so we do have a quorum. We have 243 town meeting members here. That's a great, great attendance for us. Um, <clears throat> if you have any questions about voting or anything as you would have done in town meeting, Go to the, vote, the voting portal and use the point of order button in order to find out what we're voting on and if you're confused what the vote is or anything of that nature. We're going to be using a consent agenda that was circulated into your packages last week. We're going to take that up this evening, first thing, and the votes will be recorded as an individual vote on each of the articles. If you wish to remove an article, you're going to use the request to speak and the confirm action button. I know this is different than we did the other day. Um, at the dress rehearsal, we used the Zoom raised hand feature. We've eliminated that. One of the main points of help requests that we receive was an issue of people navigating between the two screens and getting lost. So I undertook to eliminate that as much as possible. And with the help of the uh, platform developer, he was able to give us a tool in order to make it happen. So if you wanna remove something from the consent agenda, use the request to speak button and to confirm your action on this voting platform. We'll see who's removing the article or what, who wants to um, take it off this consent agenda We'll clear all the hands out. We'll go to the next consent agenda item. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, on the other night, we used the raised hand feature to second, our, to second any motions or anything else that had to be seconded. I've worked with uh, Mr. Charles Foskett, the head of the finance committee. 
he is going to second all of our motions for us. So any motion that comes up, Mr. Foskett is gonna do us the courtesy and second those so we can do not have to use the raised hand feature in Zoom at all. Like, the only reason you're gonna use that is if you have a problem with voting. And that's the only time that will be used for nothing else. Um, on the Zoom, as you'll notice up in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, there's a live on custom streaming service tab. At the request of the Disability Commission, we've arranged to have closed captioning system and we've installed that uh, through the work of Mr. Kowalski for us. If you need closed captioning, navigate up to that button, click on it, and it'll ask you a question or two, answer those, and you're gonna get live um, closed captioning of the meeting. It will open a new portal window, not a portal, I'm sorry. It'll open a new window that you're gonna have to shrink down and make fit so you can see your Zoom window and your uh, voting portal. But you do have the ability to have closed captioning of the meeting at this point. Now, I'd like to take a moment of silence for all Arlingtonians who have passed away in the past year and especially for the family of Chief Warrant Petty Officer, Second Class Marwan Samar Gabor, and for the four other Americans who were among the seven members of the peacekeeping force that was killed in the Sinai Peninsula by helicopter crashes last Thursday. Thank you. Uh, if you weren't aware, Chief, Chief uh, Warrant Officer Gabor was an Arlington native and his parents live in town. So thank you very much. Um, that's gonna end my remarks. Now we have uh, five town meeting members, I believe who have not been sworn in. Uh, Ms. Wayman, if you could bring up those five folks. Uh, Dan Palmer, William Brooks Harrelson, Christian Parenrun, Jill Schneider, and Meredith DeMola. Oh no. Uh oh. I didn't. <laughs> this is a big full power on my part. I didn't print out for myself to read. The, uh, the swearing in. So I'm going to sort of wig it from what I remember. Are they up, Julie? No, this is going to take me a second. Okay, good. That'll take me a second if I can find it. Excuse me for one second. I'm going to step away and get the uh, uh, swearing in paperwork. Okay, John, they have all been um, allowed to, to talk and
Jill, Daniel, Brooke, Meredith, and Kristen, if you'll unmute your microphones. I can't see, but I'm gonna believe that you have your right hand raised. Please repeat after me and insert your name in the appropriate spot. I. I, Jill Snyder. I, Kristen. Brooks, Charles, Daniel Palmer. Will participate fully. Will participate. We'll participate fully. fully. And will fairly evaluate all matters before town meeting. And we'll fairly we'll evaluate, evaluate all matters all before, before town, meeting. town meeting. Man, that sounds so weird. <laughs> <laughs> and, and vote to the best of the interest of the town. And vote and to the best, best of the interest of the town. Of the town. Uh, I support free speech. Support I support, support free, speech. free speech. And we'll treat others with mutual respect. And we'll treat others, we'll treat with, others, with, others respect. with mutual respect. And we'll conduct myself in a manner. And we'll, and we'll conduct, conduct myself, myself in a manner. Conduct myself in a manner. That is becoming of an elected town meeting member. That is becoming of an elected town meeting member. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties incumbent upon me. That I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties incumbent upon me. As a town meeting member. As a town meeting member. Of the town of Arlington. Of the town of Arlington. In accordance with the bylaws. In accordance with the bylaws. The Town Manager Act and the general laws of the Commonwealth of Mass, so help me God. The Town Manager Act and the general laws of the Commonwealth of Mass, so help me God. Yeah, so help me God, yep. Okay, now, <laughs> if we were in the hall, everybody would clap for you. Yay! <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Moderator. Excuse me, Mr. Moderator. Yeah. Two people have a point of order. Okay. Oh, where's my page? Where the hell my page? Oh, shit. I'm sorry, everyone. I have lost my page. Uh, in each meeting, moderate debate. Okay, John Warden. Did I, you can hear me? Yes, I can, Mr. Wharton. Thank you, Mr. Leone, uh, Mr. Moderator. I, I was going to ask how one got from where I was to where I where I was a moment ago, but I, I, I guess I was supposed to hit the launch Zoom uh, button, which, which you didn't say that. You just assumed everybody knew such an obvious thing. <laughs> yes, and um, as you'll recall, Mr. Wharton, uh, when you first start speaking, if you'll say your name and precinct for the record. Oh, yes. It's Mr. <laughs> Warden. It's uh, John Warden, Precinct 8. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Warden? Uh, not, not, not at the moment, but uh, no. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, let's Thank have you. Mr. Gordon Jameson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12. Um, Normally, if I recall at the beginning of meetings, you have a little um, colloquy with the clerk. Yeah, we haven't got there yet. Okay, just wanted to make sure because you're swearing people in. I thought I, I thought we should declare the meeting open first. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Okay, I got a script. Thank you very much, Mr. Jameson. I won't forget anything people promised. Just give us a break and a few minutes to get this going. So now I recognize the chair of the board of Selectman, Mr. John V. Hurd. Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I have my own technical issue here. My video went off and Get now it says I cannot start it because my video has been stopped by the host. That's right. You're not supposed to have video. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, in order, oh, I guess you got it back. Well, either way it works for me. I just want yeah. to make sure. All right. We can leave them up for now, Julie. All right. It is. Mr. Moderator, it is requested that the members of the select board and elected officials of the town, town manager, department heads in the town and staff, superintendent of schools and staff, committees, commissions, and boards of the town, Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee and superintendent, 
members of the Electronic Voting Committee and staff, members of the General Court representing Arlington, and also any consultants who have been retained to work for the town relative to articles to be acted on by this meeting, representatives of interested parties of Article 1, and representatives of the news media, media be permitted to sit within the special town meeting enclosure. Mr. Foskett. Mr. Foskett, would you like to uh, second that, please? Second. Second. Thank you very much, Mr. Foskett. Okay, we're going to have two votes. We're going to take that vote and we're going to combine it with the second vote. Mr. Um, Hurd, I understand you may have a second vote in order to authorize us to use the electronic voting platform. Um, uh, Tom, meeting members, we have to take a vote to authorize our proceedings forward. So, um, John, do you have the so I have it on my second motion, but I, I can do it now if, if that yeah. works, Mr. Moderate. Yes, sir. And further that town meeting shall commence business of this meeting by remote participation on the Zoom app in Z Pato Research Town Meeting Portal in satisfaction of chapter 92 of the Acts of 2020. Second. Second. Thank you very much, gentlemen. All right, town meeting members, we're going to take a vote to uh, authorize all those uh, elect elected officials and staff in, to sit within the virtual enclosure and to authorize the uh, use of the ZPATO research platform and Zoom in order to conduct our town meeting. So if you want to navigate back to your voter portal, choose one for yes, two for no, and then hit cast your vote. Mr. Uh, Kowalski is in the process of opening up the voting right now. And voting has now been enabled. So go ahead and navigate back to your portal and commence your vote. One for yes, two for no, and then cast your vote. And Ms. Wayman is going to open the raised hand feature in Zoom. If you have trouble voting, use that. And that's, again, the only reason you would use that is if you're having a voting issue. If your screen should say something like database um, connectivity issue, just hit the participate button again and that will launch you back into your um, portal. We're at the edge of the capacity of the system with oh, almost 260 people on it. So if you just, it's a momentary glitch, just re-hit participate and that'll bring you right back. So Mr. Kowalski, I'm gonna ask that you please enter votes. Yes, for Ms. Marie Kapelka and yes for Mr. John Leonard. Marie and John, Marie Kapelka and John Leonard have both um, met with me and gone over their warrant, cast, chose what their votes are, and they had that, uh, they signed it and it was notarized by a third person. And those votes are in Miss uh, Julie Brazil's possession. So they've asked us to manually cast their votes for them. And you can see what Adam is doing. So you'll see him doing this during the remainder of the meeting. Okay, we have 23 folks who have not cast their vote yet. If you folks want to go ahead and get your votes cast at this time, if you're having an issue, please use the raise hand feature in Zoom. It's only if you have a voting issue. All right, so we have three people with voting issues. So let's bring Janice Weber, Weber, Weber up. Janice, you can unmute no, your I, microphone. No, I was trying to actually find that mute button. It's on, it's hidden under my taskbar, but I saw a little blue thing, so I pressed it. That must have been the question button. Sorry. I don't okay. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Michael Byrne.
Yeah, John, I'm getting that error establishing a database connection, but I don't have any place to click on. Uh, do you see the participate button? No, I, I don't have that. Go up and hit the refresh button on your window. Uh, that little half circle up on the very upper left. Upper left, half circle. Um, I get, I get to, I don't have that either, John. I. All right, how, how, Michael? How would you vote on this? Yes or no? Um. So I'll I take the, what, what was the question? Tell, 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 ask me again. Sorry. You want us to use uh, this remote technology? Yes, 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 I do. Yes, yes. So I'm now going to hand you off to um, Dennis Lowry, who's going to okay. help work, walk you through it. Great. Does, I, thank you, John. I appreciate it. All right. Dennis, can you have a way to get him? Oh, so he's going to call you, Michael. All right. Excuse thank me, you. Mr. Mr. Moderator, moderator? Yes, sir. Would you like me to submit a verbal vote for Mr. Byrne? Yes, please do. He voted yes. Okay, so that's a good demonstration of how we're going to handle a voting issue if we have one. Um, we'll get you to vote me, uh, verbally. Adam Kowalski will enter it for you and then we'll hand you off to one of our tech support uh, team now we have five people tonight, maybe six, depending what uh, Miss Sullivan's doing, um, to help you get your portals straightened out. So right now we have 11 people vote, not voting. Uh, Peter Thompson, Jane Howard, Brooks Harrelson, Peter Gass, Scott Lever, Benjamin Amos, Michael Byrne has voted verbally, uh, Barbara Boltz, Susan McCabe, Adele Krause and Lisa Reynolds. Oh, Lisa hasn't been active for three and a half hours, so we're not sure she's even here. So I'm going to give you about 15 more seconds to vote. And we're going to close it. Mr. Moderator, we've got two hands raised. Oh, okay. Thank you. Where's my mouse? Let's take Pam Hallett. Pam lowered her hand, so I've okay. unmuted Julie Brazil. Okay, Ms. Brazil? Yes, I wanted to report that Adele Kraus, Precinct 6, votes yes. Okay. So, Mr. Kowalski, can you please enter Adele Kraus? Mr. Moderator, could I please unmute uh, Barbara Boltz? Yes. Ms. Boltz? Uh, hi. Uh, I don't know what happened because I had the split screen, but then when you started the voting, Zoom took over everything. So I can't, I couldn't vote, but I, I do vote yes on this. And I would also, uh, I put in the Q&A before that when I see the chart, the attendance chart, I'm still not listed as having as being here, but clearly I, I am here. Yes, I, I actually see you. Trying to participate. Yep, you're logged in on my screen. Oh, good. Oh, good. Uh, so we'll enter your vote now. And okay. I think you're just going to have to uh, exit full screen mode on Zoom. Well, I don't think I'm in full screen. Maybe somebody should call me again second time tonight. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Whoever called you the first time, as soon as they're free, we'll have them call you now. Do you know who it was? Oh, uh, Andrew? No, I don't know. I don't remember the name. If I saw the list of names, I would recognize it. Okay. Um, it began with an A, I think. <laughs> Dennis? It wasn't Dennis. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna, um, Barbara, we'll figure it out and have someone call you. Yes, thank you, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, so let's close voting. 
as soon as you're done. That motion passes uh, by 99%, 239 in the affirmative and two in the negative with two abstentions. So it passes. And it's gonna run through the screen. So we're gonna go through it twice, the first couple times around so everybody can check and make sure that it looks correct for them. Ms. Warden has a point of order. Patricia Warden. Patricia, you can uh, unmute yourself. Mrs. Warden, here we yes. go. Yes, um, Patricia Warden, can you hear me? Yes, everybody, uh, um, if they could just uh, announce themselves, who they yes, are Patricia and their precinct. Wouldn't. You don't have to ask if we can hear you. If I don't hear you, I'll tell you. Oh, okay. That goes Patricia, for every, all town meeting members. Patricia Warden, Precinct 8. Um, John, I, I did not press a point of order. I didn't do anything. I don't know how that came up for you. I'm uh, sorry, but I did not press anything. No problem. We'll just take it away. Thank you, though. Okay, so we've approved the use of the virtual town meeting. We're going to move on with our um, colloquy for the evening. So, constable's return is uh, Miss Brazil up. Let's get Julie Brazil up. Madam Clerk, do you have reason to believe that this meeting was appropriately called by the select board? and that the constable made a return of service on the warrant in accordance with the laws? Julie Brazil, town clerk. Yes, I so certify and declare. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is moved that if all the business of the meeting as set forth in the warrant for the special town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Wednesday, November 18th, 2020 at 8 p.m. Mr. Foskett. Second. 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 Thank you very much. I'm going to um, direct the clerk to enter one vote in order in favor of that motion. Thank you very much. Now, announcements and resolutions. I have one announcement. The town of Arlington and the Chamber of Commerce are partnering partnering to promote safe local shopping and dining using the chamber's signature slogan, Shop Arlington First. It is critical that we support our local businesses as much as possible right now. You can help not just by doing business in town, but also by helping to promote the Shop Arlington First message within your precinct, with your friends and family and on social media. You can visit by www.shoparlingtonfirst.com to learn more and to help our town businesses. Thank you very much. Any other announcements or resolutions? I'm not sure how we're gonna do that, but um, see any? Do you want me to raise, open the raised hands, John? Yeah, let's do that. We'll open the raised hands for a minute. Bill Berkowitz, oh, nope. Now, these are only announcements or resolutions. So, um, Ms. DuPont, Deanne DuPont. Deanne, did you have a point uh, announcement or a resolution? No, that was an accident. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Bill Berkowitz.
Bill, did you have an, a, a point of order or, uh, excuse me, a um, announcement or a resolution? You oh, raised no, your hand. I'm, I'm sorry, John, I, that was an accident as well. Okay. Uh, the last person who might have one is Adele Krause. Ms. Krause? Ms. Krause, do you have an announcement? Or... Nope, I guess not. Okay. Seeing no more, um, I call for all reports of committees. So our, that brings us to Article 1. And I'm gonna call for our reports of committees. So the first committee would be Board of Selectmen, Select Board, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that the report of the Select Board be received. Second. Second, okay. To we're gonna take one vote at the end to receive all reports at once. So thank you very much. Uh, we have the select board's report. Mr. Moderator. Yes, sir. Charles Foskett, chair of the finance committee. I request that the report of the finance committee and its addendum be received. With your uh, permission, I request that an error be corrected on the first page, changing Wednesday, November 16th to Monday, November 16th, and that the addendum be included in the report. Also posted to the website is an informational report on the Arlington Police Department for town meeting reference prepared by finance committee members, Christine Deschler, Vice Chair, Daryl Harmer and Jonathan Wallach. Thank you. We'll make that re uh, correction administratively and we will receive both of your reports. And Thank you. Ms. Brazil was going to um, approve, make motion to accept that. So maybe at the end of the time, at the end of the reports, we'll just make one motion to receive them all at once and have one second at that point in time. Any other reports? Um, Ms. Diantar? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Team Borkaya Yantar, Precinct 7, and Chair of the Capital Planning Committee. I request that the report of the Capital Planning Committee be received. So moved. Second. Thank you. Arlington uh, Redevelopment Board. Mr. Moderator and town meeting members, I'm Rachel Zemberry, Chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. The, I suggest that the Arlington Redevelopment Board be received. Second. Second, okay, thank you very much and uh, congratulations on your new position, Ms. How I pronounce your last name? Uh, Zemberry, thank Zemberry. you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Zemberry. My pleasure. Yeah, um, and we have the um, Community Preservation Act. Do they have a report? I thank you, Mr. Moderator Eric Helmuth, Precinct 12, Chair of the Community Preservation Act Committee. I move that the report of the Community Preservation Act Committee be received. Second. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Electronic Voting Study Committee, um, James O'Connor. Uh, Mr. Moderator, thank you. This is James O'Connor, Chair of the Election Modernization Committee. I move that the Election Modernization Committee report be received. Second. Thank you very much. Any other reports? I may have missed one or two. Let me look through my list. If there are any other reports, please, um, Mr. Meeks, do you have a report? I wasn't sure if he did, Mr. Moderator. Oh, okay. All right. 
If I have no other reports, if anybody comes up with one, let me know. Could so, I turn on the raise hand specifically for that, Mr. Moderator, for a minute? Okay. So we're going to raise hands right now. If you have a report of your committee and you want to get my attention, please do it right now. Use the raise hand feature. Oh, Sharon Grossman of the Human Rights Commission. Sharon Grossman, Precinct 8, co-chair of the Human Rights Commission. I move that the town meeting accept the report of the Human Rights Commission. Uh, we receive reports. Yes. Second. Yeah, we... Thank you. Um, Sharon, if you could email that to me, please. Yep. Thank you very much. And I'll have it circulated. Anyone else have a report? Use the raise hands feature. Okay. Seeing none. Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, folks. This is Doug Heim, Town Council. I just wanted to note two administrative corrections to the select board's reports. Um, okay. the first May I, Mr. Moderator? Yes, go ahead, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, the first is in Article 5, Fossil Fuel Infrastructure. For those who are looking at a hard copy, that's page 5 of the Select Board Report. Otherwise, you can look at Section 1 of the vote on the Special Act. At the very end of Section 1, it says, as defined in Section 4 of this Act, where, with regard to the definition of fossil fuels, but it should read, as defined in section three of this act. So in section one of the vote on the special act, the last paragraph should read as defined in section three of this act, not as defined in section four of this act. And again, that's page five on the select board report. The second is with respect to article six, police civilian advisory board study committee and I appreciate a town resident pointing this out to me. In section I, A, lowercase numeral two, that basically lists the different members of the committee. It should not read diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator. That position was updated to diversity, equity, and inclusion director. That's page 11 of the select board report. So coordinator should be stricken and director should be put in place. I know that there's a substitute motion that has an element of that, but regardless of whether that substitute motion was uh, is, is successful or not, it should be changed from coordinator to director. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Hein. We'll make those corrections administratively at this point in time. So town meeting members, if you can make those corrections to your reports, if you have them in paper or electronically, however you're doing it. All right, seeing as we have no other uh, reports of committees, we're gonna ask uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, excuse me, Mr. Foskett. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Move that the recommended votes contained in the respective reports of the Finance Committee, Select Board, Redevelopment Board, and other committees be before the meeting without further motion. Okay, so um, we need Ms. Uh, Brazil to second that motion. because Charlie made the motion, he can't second it. So we have Julie do that. Julie Brazil, precinct 12, second. Thank you very much. We now have before us a- uh, Mr. Moderator, I move that article one be laid upon the table. As Soon as we take a vote on that motion, we will do so, sir. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Kralski, can we bring up a vote on that? Oh. Oh. I don't know if we have one, you have to do it on the fly. So it would be receive reports, reports and committees, perfect. So town meeting members, please navigate back to your voting portal. Ms. Wayman is going to open the raised hand feature in Zoom if you have an issue voting. When you're back in the portal, town meeting members, please select one for yes to receive the reports of the select board, FinCom, capital planning, Redevelopment Board, Community Preservation Act, Election Modernization Committee, and the Arlington Human Rights Commission. Um, 
please vote one for yes. If you would like to receive those reports, two for no, and then click cast your vote. People are getting this down pretty good. We're up to 172 votes classed already. 207. This might go quicker than I was, than I could hope for. Everyone seems to be getting this pretty good. Good. And moderator, again, there is a point of order. Yes. Where is my point of order? Oh, Len Diggins. Yes, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I just wanted to point out that the HRC report is online. I mean, they do such good and important and valuable work. I didn't want people wondering you know, if they had to wait a while to see it. So it is on the website. Oh, it is. OK. Thank you very much, Mr. Diggins. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Uh, Ms. Uh, Barbara Boltz has an issue, Ms. Wayman. Let's bring her up. And we're going to enter a yes vote, Mr. Uh, Kowalski for Marie Kapelka and John Leonard. And Ms. Boltz? Yes, uh, the same thing happened as before. As soon as you call for the vote, I lose the portal. Um, I've been successful so, sorry, Barbara Boltz, Precinct 9. So I, I lose the portal and I can't vote. I vote yes, obviously. Um, I don't. I don't understand it. I have both of them on the screen with success. And as soon as you call for a vote, I get a little room thing instead of the portal. Uh, hmm. Well, no, it says Arlington Town Meeting portal via Zoom. That's where you're not in the portal, you're on I Zoom. Know, I, I know, it, it goes, as soon as you vote, the portal goes away. So anyway, I vote yes. Okay, did, did someone call you yet? No. Oh, um, Andrew, can you get to Barbara somehow? Andrew is going to call you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if nine members haven't voted yet, Adam Patcher, Peter Howard, Thomas Michaelman, Sylvia Dominguez, Jane Howard, Laura Gittleson, Brian Rearig, Joanne Preston, and Barbara has voted verbally. So we're now down to eight members. If those members would please vote at this point, we'll give you another 15, 20 seconds. And about 10 more seconds. Okay, we're down to five people. Peter Howard, Joanne Preston, and Adam Patcher have not voted yet. If you guys have an issue, please let us know. Otherwise, we're going to close voting. Okay, let's close voting. The reports are so received. The motion passes 242. It's a unanimous vote, and I so declare it. That closes Article 1. Mr. Foskett. Mr. Moderator, uh, I move that Article 1 be laid upon the table. So moved. And that brings us to Article 2. Article 1 is upon the table. Oops. I need that big desk you give me a town hall. Okay, we're gonna do the consent agenda. As soon as we run through that. So again, if you wanna remove something from the consent agenda, you'll go to the portal, hit the request to speak and confirm action that will give me an indication that you want that article off of the consent agenda. 
So, okay, make sure I'm ready to go. Okay, so I'll read the article number. I'll give you a brief explanation of what it is and then wait a minute to see if anyone re uh, requests to speak or remove it. Article three, bylaw regulation uplighting to expand the ability to uplight to religious and commercial buildings. So Adam Badnick is removing article three. And John Warden has a point of order. Let's see what John Warden's point of order is. Mr. Warden, you can unmute yourself. Mr. Warden, point of order. Hi, John. Oh, there we go. All right, yeah, sorry uh, for the delay. I, I I had to find out where the unmute myself button was. John ah. Warden, Precinct 8. Now, I did not see, I was on the portal side and I didn't see anything that said request to speak. Hmm. So I, I wanted to also I would have taken that I also would have taken that off the off the uh, 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 the consent agenda. In fact, I, I would suggest you take all the things off the consent agenda as, as was done during your practice session. Well I'm not going to do that. Um, the request to speak button is right below the point of order button. But I, this Article 3 is off the consent agenda. Okay, this article is off, so it's clear the RTS. Okay, this brings us to Article 4, Amendment Bikeway, Minuteman Bikeway Hours. It would be uh, expanded to 930 and as posted by the manager. Does anyone wish to read, take that off the consent agenda? Okay, number four stays on. Article six, establishment of Peace Civilian Advisory Board Study Committee. Mr. Warden is taking that off. Christine Kelleher, Elizabeth Trey, and Sanjay Newton. Okay, article six is off the consent agenda. Go ahead, clear. Article seven, bylaw amendment envision Arlington, update the language, revise and articulate their goals. Mr. Weinstein wants to take that off the consent agenda. Mr. Mr. Moderator, those oh, are point, point those of order. Those are points of order, so okay. Mr. Warden and then Mr. Weinstein. John, the uh, mute button, it is the bottom lower left-hand corner of your screen. Looks like a little microphone. Oh, God. Okay. All right. All right, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Uh, thank you. I, Mr. Moderator, I was trying to get to the um, Ray, uh, wish to speak on that, the article about the bikeway. Uh, I wanted to remove that from the, from the uh, agenda, but you move too quickly for me, or I, I move too slowly for you. I'm not good about shifting these screens back and forth and all this stuff. I can't see the little tiny symbols. So I hope you'll remove that from the consent agenda. Mr. Warden, is it your intention to remove every article from the consent agenda? Uh, not every article, but uh, do you want me to list the ones that I don't propose to remove? Well. We were hoping a couple of them were gimmies that no one really care if we're going to expand the definition of the uh, Vision Arlington 
or if we're going to allow people to go on the bikeway legally for another half an hour at nighttime, or extend and expand the definition of the modernization committee just to kind of clear the decks for uh, substantive articles that we would really um, care about, which is one of the reasons we have a consent agenda. But it, you, you're free to do what you want. Just please do it on each individual article so we know who to go back to. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Um, Mr. Weinstein had a point of order, but he has lowered his hand. So Mr. Uh, Berkowitz is removing Article 6, Article 7 from the consent agenda. Okay. The Article 8, Acceptance of Legislation Municipal Affording Housing Trust Fund to establish a trust fund. Anyone wish to remove Article 8? There are two motions. Uh, Mr. Gersh is removing that. Okay. Number nine, Election Modernization Committee to expand the definition of the committee and the, who are the voting members. Anyone wish to remove that one from the consent agenda? Mr. Warden's removing that, very good. Number 10, acceptance of legislation, Gold Star Family Tax Exemption. Anyone wanna take tax exemption for Gold Star? Okay, Sophie Magliazzo, Magliazzo taking 10 off. Number 11, Home Rule Legislation for Justin Brown allow Justin to take the firefighter examination. Anyone wanna take that off? Yep, okay, that one's off too. Point of order, Miss Bloom, what's your point of order? Nancy? Mr. Moderator? Yes. I had a question about um, oh, article um, about the question about one with, with Justin Brown. There was one report that said he was 32 years old and one report said he was 39 years old. Well, uh, we'll, we'll discuss it under article 11 when we get there. Okay. Um, I'll have somebody find out exactly how old he is. My understanding was 39 as well, but we'll find out. Thank you. Um, just a quick one, quick reminder for everyone to use name and precinct, please. Yes, please. Oh, correct. Um, Article 12. Anyone wish to remove home rule legislation, consolidation of town meeting elections? So just rejigger the way, like Mr. Warden wants to remove that one. Okay. Article 14, Home Rule Legislation, Senior Water Discount. Anyone wish to remove Senior Water Discount? Sophie does, Sophie Magliazzo. Uh, collective Bargaining. Article 22, Collective Bargaining. Anyone wish to remove that? Well, at this point, we might as well, because there's nothing left on the consent agenda. Um, okay, we have something on there. Yeah, okay, Article 24, Appropriation for Community Preservation Fund. Anyone wish to remove appropriation for Community Preservation Fund? They were $175,000 for three projects. Uh, Bill Ford wants to take it off. Well, I'm going to take a um, go out on a limb here. I'm going to take Article 22 off because that will leave nothing on the consent agenda. And I'm going to direct the clerk to enter one vote for no action on the consent agenda. I guess that was an epic fail.
That closes Article 2 and brings us to Article 3. Article 3, uh, bylaw amendment regulation of outdoor lighting uplighting. Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Article three, this is an article submitted by Paul Schlickman and 10 registered voters to further amend the town uplighting bylaw to add buildings used for re religious and commercial purposes to the list of exempt exemptions. The select bo board voted 5-0 for positive action on this article. Thank you very much. If anyone wishes to speak on the article, please uh, raise your hand. Um, as you can see right in front of you, you have the recommended vote of the board of the select board. Uh, Mr. Adam Bad Badick. Good evening, this is Adam Badick, Precinct 5. I uh, would like to reject this outright, but I've submitted an amendment to at least rein it in to something reasonable. The, last year, Mr. Schlickman pr uh, presented us with this idea of prohibiting uplighting as a way of promoting dark skies and reducing light pollution, which I thought was a fantastic idea and was happy to support. The proposed amendment adds in a significant number of buildings and basically undoes the entire point of protecting our dark skies at night. I've submitted an amendment suggesting that perhaps these exemptions could uh, be cut off at 930 unless, you know, on occasional specific reason that somebody needs uplighting for some sort of special event in the evening, they could get permission from the select board. Uh, so I humbly submit that as an amendment uh, to at least protect some portion of our dark skies in the later evening. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Um, we have before you, Mr. Uh, Badix, proposed motion. You should all have received that electronically. Uh, Mr. Uh, Foskey, can you please second? Second. Seconded. Thank you very much. Um, Smith Friedman. Beth Ann Friedman, did you want to introduce your amendment? Beth Ann Friedman, Precinct 15. Um, I just wanted to amend the wording to, um, let me see what it is. So, um, I have to find it. This is my amendment too. <laughs> We're gonna show it to you right on the screen. You wanted to use it, uh, building used exclusively for commercial purposes. You wish to add that word exclusively in. Yes, um, not looking necessarily uh, what's happening today, but there are a number of um, multi-use buildings, which are um, commercial, combination of commercial and residential. And most of them now are just, um, you know, one or two stories but above the commercial, but at some point there might be more. And I wanted to make sure that um, we didn't have to go back to this amendment that in the future, if uh, the commercial um, section of the building wanted to illuminate it, they would be prohibited to do so. Very good. Um, as town meeting members will recall, when you were finished uh, making your presentation, as a verbal cue to me and the staff, if you could just say thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. And then we know you're done. Second. Second. Thank you very much, Mr. Foskett. That's been seconded. Okay, that brings up uh, Sophie Mag Magliazzo. Yes, good evening. Sophie Magliazzo, Precinct 8. Um, this seems to be a lot of it, exemptions now, and I'm curious if. Um, what is left um, if, if we were to approve all these exemptions is my first question, Mr. Moderator. My second question would be, what are, have any particular commercial buildings um, or commercial purpose buildings requested this, or is this just a generous um, looking forward into the future? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Mr. Heim, do you have an answer for that?
Douglas Heim Town Council, it's my understanding that the purpose of this particular uh, amendment was to correct something that its proponent, Mr. Schlickman, had originally not intended to be included in, in the uh, uh, regulation of outdoor light. So the original scope of Mr. Schlickman's um, article several years ago um, was not necessarily intended to sort of further regulate commercial businesses, which generally don't necessarily uh, directly abut as many residential properties. Um, same thing with houses of, of worship um, in terms of their overall impact to my understanding. So if I recall correctly, Mr. Schlickman can, can certainly supplement my comments here. He attempted to introduce this um, clarification uh, as the scope of this bylaw was expanded uh, in its most recent uh, further amendments so that it wouldn't pose an issue for, you know, uh, uplighting of, you know, a church sign or uplighting of something like the Capitol Theater or something of that nature. I'll, I'll let Mr. Schlickman correct that if I'm, if I'm, that's a mistaken impression, but that's, that's my understanding. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Did that answer your questions, Ms. Magliazzo? Um, it does. I, from what I understand, then no specific commercial purpose building has requested this. In That's what I understand. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Jamison, Gordon Jamison. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. Um, I admit that um, I was involved in the uh, revision of this initially. Uh, I apologize to the meeting for that. Uh, Mr. Schlickman has been very vigilant on this, but I do like both the amendments and urge the body to vote both for uh, Ms. Mr. Baddox and Ms. Um, Friedman's uh, amendments. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Jameson. Mr. Schlickman, Paul Schlickman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. Uh, the reason why we're exempting the commercial uses, there are some businesses that are current and, and churches as well that are current, currently using flat panel floodlights, which the intent was to ban those or to sharply regulate them. Uh, and the intent was not to prohibit them overall from doing architectural lighting, but uh, providing them an option of how to do it, uh, given that the flat panel floodlights uh, were contemplated being removed under the terms of the article. So that's why we're permitting the uplighting uh, uh, with this. And I, uh, like Ms. Friedman's uh, uh, amendment and uh, Mr. Baddock has a good amendment if that's the wish of the meeting. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Schlickman. Um, Steve Revelak. Stephen Revelak. Hello, Mr. Moderator. This is Steve Revelak of 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Um, one, I have one observation and one question I'd like to ask. The observation is that just in terms of total land area, the commercial districts in Arlington constitute roughly five, a little over five and a half percent of the town. It's not a very big area overall, at least relative to the size of the town as a whole. Um, I was wondering, since the uh, a similar article was passed by last year's town meeting, um, do we know how many businesses or uh, houses of worship had had were required to alter their exterior lighting um, as a result? And that is that is all I have. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I don't know. Um, is Mr. Uh, Michael Byrne have an answer to that question? Let's bring Mike Byrne up as the building inspector to see if 
he has an answer to that for us. Uh, good evening, Mr. Moderator, Michael Byrne, PC 13, uh, building inspector. Um, I must say that we have very few complaints. Um, commercial, I, uh, offhand, I can only think of three. Um, in residential, there, there have been several, um, but I must say uh, they, 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 they seem to be quite uh, argument, uh, neighborhood arguments that we want to get involved with, but um, the, the number is, is low, yes. Okay. Of complaints, I doubt whether we, you know, we, we only hear complaints. There could be others that we just don't hear of. So no, no complaints were made to you that, and a very low amount. A very low amount, John, yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. You. Mr. Revelak, anything else? Steve Revelak, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Nothing further, Mr. Moderator. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Zarina Memon. Yes, good evening, Mr. Moderator. I have, I'm putting in a motion to terminate debate in all matters related to this article. Second. 21. Sec <laughs> Great. Uh, we have a motion to terminate debate. It's been seconded. Uh, so, Mr. It's a non-debatable motion. So, Mr. Karalski, please bring up the motion to terminate debate vote. So, town meeting members, please navigate back to your portal. As soon as voting is enabled, you should get your voting screen. Hit refresh if you need to. Ms. Wayman is going to open the uh, raised hand feature on the Zoom screen if you're having an issue voting. It's a two thirds vote, so go ahead. One for yes, two for no, and then cast your vote. So we're voting to terminate debate on the motion and the two amendments. Mr. Moderator, we have a raised hand. Okay. Oh my, that's big. All righty. Mr. Berkowitz. I'm sorry, John. Yep. I'm still learning. Yep. Are you having trouble voting or is that a mistake, Bill? I'm having trouble voting too, but that's, uh, <clears throat> I'm looking for the voting screen. A voting screen, okay. Uh, <clears throat> hit exit full screen mode up in the upper right hand corner. And, uh, yep. and move your that screen aside, you might see your voting portal. Move that screen aside? Yeah. I get a bunch of, sorry, I get a bunch of photos and. Uh... Okay, so I'm gonna take your vote and I'm gonna have um, Chris Fickett give you a call to help you out. Thank you. Chris, do you, can you get find his phone number, Chris? Yep, I'll grab that. Okay, Bill, Chris is gonna give you a call. Thank you. Okay, and you're voting yes? Yes. Yes, okay, let's enter a vote for um, Mr. William Berkowitz. Okay, we have 243 votes in, we have 10 missing votes. Alan Reedy, Sarah Bank Burks, Mike Ruderman, Joanne Preston, Asia Kapka, Dan Dunn, Sherry Barons, and Beth Benedict. If you guys are still there, please vote. We'll give you another couple seconds to vote. Okay, I cut people down to about five. So Sarah, Michael, Joanne, and Beth. 
you got four missing votes. If you guys want to go ahead and vote, we'll give you 15 seconds, then I'm going to close voting. Mr. Moderator, Julie yep. Brazil has her hand raised. Okay. Mr. Moderator, Beth Benedict, Precinct 21, votes yes. Okay. Mr. Kowalski is going to Kowalski is going to add that in for her. Uh, Sherry Barron is also having trouble voting. I'm going to unmute her. Okay. Ms. Barron? Hi, Sherry. She says she says in the Q and A that she votes yes. Oh, is that okay? Is that sufficient? Uh, let's look. Well, I can't get my voting screen. I vote yes. Yeah, we'll take that vote as a yes vote. So okay. Sherry Barron votes yes. Sherry, if you're having trouble on the Q and A, um, get in touch with one of the. Um, go ahead and answer that in the Q and A, and somebody will get back to you from the tech support team. Mr. Moderator, my screen says she has already voted. Oh, so you did vote, Sherry. Very good. Let's not take her vote away. Let's close voting at this point. And the motion passes by 97%. 233 yes, six no votes. So the debate is terminated. As soon as we run through the screens, that will bring us up to the actual votes and the two amendments. First, we'll vote on Mr. Baddock's amendment. He wants to limit the time um, to before nine o'clock or with special permission of the select board and for 10 or fewer days. So first we're gonna vote on Mr. Baddock's amendment. If you wish to vote yes on Mr. Baddock's amendment to add in the words before 9.30 p.m. or with specific permission from the select board for 10 or fewer days, please vote yes. Navigate back to your screen, your voting portal, click one for yes, two for no, or abstain, and then click cast your vote. And we have opened up the Raised hands in the Zoom if you're having trouble voting. Uh, Mr. Rearig has a point of order. Mm -mm. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I'm not clear exactly what we've, we are voting on. There was a, a main motion on the floor Yes. Are we voting only to or to amend that main motion by the, the the difference between it and Mr. Baddock's amendment? Well, we are what as we always do. We vote um, the amendments first. First, we're voting on Mr. Baddock's amendment to put the 9:30 time limit, or by permission of the select board, for 10 or fewer days. Then we'll vote for Ms. Friedman's amendment to um, for add in the words exclusively. And then if those pass or do not pass, we vote on the main motion as printed in the select board's report as amended. So we go through the two <laughs> amendments serially, and then we vote on the main motion as amended or not. Okay, it, it's a little confusing. 
Yep. Because um, each of those two um, amendments was actually present drafted in the form of a substitute. But you're treating them as amendments to the main motion. Correct. They it was their amendments. I'm treating okay. them as amendments. Thank you, Mr. Monterey. Thank you. Nancy Bloom has a point of order. Uh, Nancy Bloom, precinct 618. I'm sorry, Mr. Moderator. I, th I thought I, re I canceled that uh, point of order. Uh, not a problem. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. So we have uh, 35 folks haven't voted yet. If you have an issue voting, please uh, use your raised hand feature. Otherwise, go ahead and vote at this point in time. Twenty-six folks haven't voted. Every time I say that, ten more people disappear from the not voting rolls. We're down to sixteen. Nine. I didn't get recommended votes from Mr. Mr. Leonard or Ms. Kropelka, so we're not going to enter them in verbally. So the last eight people, Michaela May, Patricia Costa, Thomas Michaelman, Alham Sadat, Susan Weber, Sarah Burks, Joanne Preston, and Bill Berkowitz, if you'll please take a moment to vote. <laughs> I'm going to give those people 15 more seconds to vote. We're down to six people. As you can see, voting takes a little longer than in the meeting. Mr. Moderator, uh, yes. Bill Bergowitz is still still on the phone with uh, Chris. Okay. Does Bill want to register a vote on this amendment? I, I will ask. Hold on. Mr. Moderator, do you mind if I put up the language for this? Yes, please do. So here's the language of Mr. Baddock's recommended vote, uh, amendment. He's adding the first underlined third line down before 930 or with specific permission of the select board for 10 or fewer consecutive days. Um, Mr. Moderator, Mr. Yes, Berkowitz Andrew. is a no. No, All right, Mr. Berkowitz is entering a no vote on this amendment. Thank you, sir. As soon as we get Bill's vote in, we're gonna uh, Close voting. That motion passes 75 percent, 177 yes, and 58 no's. That amendment carries. We'll run through the screens. Everyone can check your vote. Okay, after the screen, we're going to do a vote on Ms. Friedman's amendment. If you'll bring up that uh, language as soon as you can, Mr. Kowalski. 
a town meeting member. Uh, Jordan Weinstein has a point of order. Otherwise, please town meeting members navigate back to your voting portal. Refresh if you need to vote one for yes, two for no. And what's your point of order, Mr. Weinstein? Um, I'd just like to request, if possible, uh, under these circumstances, that while we're discussing an article uh, or an amendment, that the text of it that we're, uh, that we're debating and then voting on be kept displayed as long as possible. I think oh. that's much more important for, for us to be able to refer to it and understand what we're voting on than to have to watch the votes coming in uh, on that uh, graph. Oh, very good point. Thank you. Mr. Karlski will do his best to do that. So you can see what Ms. Friedman wants to enter in here is in the bolded portion, the underlined word exclusively. Mr. Moderator, yep. Sherry, Sherry Barron has her hand raised. Okay. Ms. Barron? John? Yes, ma'am. I can't vote. I mean, I can sometimes, <laughs> but, uh, gosh. Anyway, oh, we, I vote yes. Okay. We'll see if you voted, Adam, we'll, um, Adam Kralski will add that oh, in for I you. I didn't. I know I didn't vote this time. Oh, wait a minute. No, but I'm just giving you, <clears throat> excuse me, my um, verbal. Okay, we'll, we'll just um, enter your verbal vote. Thank you. You're right, you haven't voted. So we're gonna vote yes for you. And there are 41 members who haven't voted yet. If you'll please take a, a second, go to your portal screen and vote at this point. Patricia, Ward, Patricia Warden has a point of order. Hello, um, Patricia Warden, Precinct 8. Can you hear me, John? Yes, I can. I'll All tell right. you if I can't. I, I just want you to please, could you read the amendment? Because the print is too small for me to see it on the Zoom screen. Um, uh, uh, you know, for younger people won't have a problem with it, but if you could quickly read it to us. Okay, yes, her amendment, after the words building used, she adds the word exclusively. So her amendment would read buildings used exclusively for commercial purposes. Uh, so she wants, she wants to add in word only exclusive commercial buildings, not a mixed use building. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Warden had a point of order. I withdraw. I, okay. I, I, I withdraw. No, you that. have to unmute yourself. No, I can hear him. He's very fine. He's <laughs> withdrawing his point of order. Thank you, Mr. Warden. If um, the last 10 members would please vote, Mr. Warden, Ms. Slutsky, Arvin Lewitton, Patricia Warden, Christian Klein, Joyce Radosha, Mark McCabe, Zachary Grunko, Joanne Preston, and Sarah Burks. If you guys can please vote. We have six members left. I'm going to give them 15 seconds to vote. I still have a watch. See, I got an old fashioned stopwatch. That's how I'm telling. You got 10 seconds. And 15 seconds. Okay, let's close voting on Ms. Friedman's motion. And 
Patricia Wharton has a new point of order and Susan Stamps. That Mr. Pass. Automator? Yeah. I do not have a, another point of order. I yes. Did not, I did not press it again. Sorry. Oh. oh, okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Stamps has a point of order, but that uh, the amendment carries. So it's 180 and it's affirmative, 54 in the negative. Ms. Stamps, what's your point of order? My point of order is that I'm surprised that both of these amendments passed. Well, uh, that's, that's no, no, no. Let me. Can I just finish my point, um, Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir, ma'am. The um, the way the town meeting is being conducted um, this time is that we're not sitting next door neighbors and saying, "Oh, did you understand this? Like, what does that mean?" And you know, what do you what do you think? And sort of have this whole discussion um, and sort I have a good understanding of what the amendments were. And I'm just surprised where both of these amendments limited the uplighting motion from last year or the first one did. Well, they weren't, it, 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 the, the Paul- The stamps. Was, yeah. What, that it that's, was, not, that's not a point of order. You're, well, you're continuing the debate. Point, you're continue, would, you're, you're, madam, you're continuing the debate. Your point of order is you don't understand what we're voting on. Oh, is that the only that, that, point yeah, of order? Yeah, that's a point of order. Well, a point of you're you're basically yes. continuing the debate. No, that's, I know I'm not. No, no I'm not. I'm sorry. I beg to differ. Well, I'm leading up to what my point is, which is well, that I, I would hope that perhaps the um, items that we are being that we're being asked to vote on might be a little bit par more paraphrased and explained before the vote. That's all. If it, if it can be done. I, I will try my best to stay within the proponent's language and words. I don't want to uh, misconstrue what their motions or their amendments are trying to do. So I will try and do that as best I can and staying within the bounds of their, their, prop, their proposition. And I don't want to paraphrase them wrong, incorrectly. Okay, but thank I, you. I understand what you're getting at. Okay, so uh, let's close. John, quick yeah. reminder for name and precinct, please. Oh, yes. So Susan, we should have got your um, name and precinct. So it's Susan Stamps, precinct three. And Ms. Preston has a point of order now. Joanne Preston. Yes, I've been unable to vote because I've had technical difficulties. Oh. And I've been on the phone the whole time, so I haven't been able to hear the discussion. Ah. Uh, have you well, been have one you of the other problems is I can't if I want to speak, I understand I have to go back and get on the Zoom. No, you get you asked to speak in the voting portal on the yes. same yeah, but in just order. as you did now, you rose a point of order. Yes. You would raise right underneath that point of order button, I understand, is a request to speak button. Mm -hmm. And if you want to speak, you hit that and you hit confirm your action just as you did for point oh. of order. Then and I that, don't have to unmute myself on the Zoom page. Well, once Ms. Wayman uh, elevates you to a speaking role, you then do have to unmute yourself. Well, I can't get to the Zoom page. Well, you, you're so pretty successful I right now. Vote and not speak. Well, you, you're doing a good job right now. Yes, but I didn't have to go to the Zoom page. That's where you are right now, Joanne. Really? You're, yeah, okay. you're on Zoom right now. Okay. Otherwise, you couldn't it. speak to me. Can Can you get back and, and vote? I don't know. All right, well, we're going to find out in a minute because we're going to take another vote right now. Okay. Okay. All right. So right now we're going to vote on Article 3 as amended by Mr. Badick's motion, his amendment to put time limits on it, and as amended 
by Ms. Friedman's to make it exclusively for commercial buildings. So it is as presented in the select board's report as amended by the 930 time limits and the exclusively for commercial purposes. So if you wanna go ahead and change that bylaw up, Mr. Levy has a, a point of order, but in the meantime, we can open voting while we take Mr. Levy's point of order. So Mr. Levy, what's your point of order? All right, Dave Levy, precinct 18. Levy, um, sorry. Oh, uh, no worries. Um, yeah. Question for the Mr. Wright, is Mr. Kurowski able to see what the vote count looks like while people are voting? No. Oh, he's not? No, we can't see that. That's hidden. Oh, okay. uh, all we can see is exact. You're actually looking at his screen. Yeah. Right. When you see that, uh, the eight, four, the three precincts rolling by, it just tells us whether someone has actually voted. Nobody knows what it is until we close voting. Oh, okay. Because I was just wondering if, you know, after a certain point, you know, with all due respect to people who have technical difficulties, if it's worth getting their votes in, if clearly the vote is going one way or another, almost like a provisional ballot. No, no. Um, I can see how many people have not voted yet and who they are. That's how I know to um, read off certain names. I know those people haven't voted and I'm trying to prompt them to vote before we, we shut down voting. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Moderator. You're welcome. Uh, Timur Yantar has a point of order, but voting is open, Adam. Uh, Mr. Moderator, just wanted to confirm that we're voting on the main article, Article 3. Yes, we are, as amended. So Article 3, as amended. So just put your main, just put your main vote up your main article vote up. That's all we need to do at this point. Thank you. And it's Julie and my headache later. Julie Brazil, not Wayman. Uh, Timor, what's your uh, point of order? Mr. Moderator, Timor Yantar, Precinct 7. Uh, the earlier speaker asked for you to clarify uh, as much as possible the motions. I believe you misspoke. Uh, Ms. Friedman's amendment uh, her language is to increase the restriction. Uh, the word she adds is exclusively. So she means to right. take the portion where it says buildings used for commercial purposes and to make it only build, make that clause only buildings used exclusively for commercial purposes. So mixed use buildings would not be governed by this. And I don't believe you said that right when you summarized the amendment before. Yeah, she, that's why I don't really like to summarize too much, but I do. It, her amendment does make it exclusively for commercial purposes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. All right, so what you're looking for at now is the selectments language, select board's language without the two amendments on them because um, we don't have that on the fly. So uh, we have 150 people voting, 94 have still not voted. So if you can go ahead and vote. So we have the select board's language as amended by Mr. Vedic and Ms. Friedman. Eighteen people have not voted yet. I'll give them another minute. Okay, we're down to five. Nancy Morrow. Uh, I'm going to enter in. Ms. Kropelka's vote. Ms. Kropelka votes yes. And John Leonard also votes yes. So if you could add those and let's bring uh, Mr. Ford in for his point of order. Hi, John, this is Bill Ford. Um, the, the portal, when it's 
when it says what we're voting on, I just noticed that it doesn't say as amended. So I didn't know where I was at one point because of that. Um, right. It might be helpful if we just said as amended when we go to the final votes with all the amendments. Yep, I, I thought I did say that, but the portal will not reflect that as amended um, on these couple articles that we have received amendments on because it's um, the votes are already entered into the system and, and we would have to take several minutes to go and rename everything and slow the meeting down. So we just, it's not going to change it, but that's, it is as amended. Thank you. Okay. Um, Moderator, I, I have a point of clarification. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Leonard was our second vote, right? Kropelka yeah. and Leonard? Yes, they were both yes votes. Thank you. And um, Mr. Rearig has a point of order, or is that a new point of order for Brian? I, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Brian Rarick, Precinct 8. Um, I, I'm a bit concerned about the uh, the last two votes that were recorded. Um, I, I, I very much respect the, uh, the fact that you've chosen to accept um, affidavit votes from, from people who couldn't attend tonight. But in this case, um, those, those people cast votes on uh, a motion that they saw, and that is a different motion than the one that the meeting is voting on tonight, because it's been amended. So would you have me disenfranchise them? I, I, I only raised the point of order, sir. <laughs> yeah, um, I hear your point of order, but I'm not sure what I can do. Um, they asked me to vote in a certain way, and I'm just reporting how they wanted their vote. Okay, thank you, Mr. Runner. Thank you. Um, Mr. Jelkut has a point of order. Daniel Jalkut, Precinct 6. I actually had raised the point of order for the same reason as the previous speaker. Uh, trying, I was trying to get my head around this unusual situation, um, and I basically agree that it seems fine to the extent that it's preordained votes. It seems a little bit unusual to me that somebody would cast votes um, premeditating that they would not be open to the debate of their fellow town meeting members. But, um, you know, I actually was withdrawing my uh, point of order just now when it sounded like the point previous point was being made, but your response, Mr. Moderator, that you felt accused of disenfranchising. No, them. no, that's, I didn't accuse, I didn't say he was accusing me. I would ask if he would have me do that. Okay, my, my, my I mistake. Didn't, I didn't but, want to accuse Mr. Um, um, rear rig of anything. That's not, okay. not my intention. Yeah. Well, uh, so my my further point on this is it's your judgment call that you are carrying out their wishes by having the votes apply to an amended article. Uh, who knows what could happen in town meeting? Uh, somebody could amend this to dramatically um, change the impact to the point that I don't know that I don't know that you can I mean, you, you may know these people better than I do, but I wouldn't want to confidently cast somebody's vote for an issue. You, know, you understand what I'm saying, I think. Yeah, it's it's yeah. just the fact that we can modify. You know, the truth is there are probably people here tonight who had intended to either vote for the article or to vote against it and whose decision on how to vote was changed because we amended the article. So I, I, I don't think you have an easy situation here with this, with this conundrum, but I just want to add to what the previous speaker said that it, it raises an issue to my mind that, um, that we don't have the ability without their presence or their ability to phone in, we don't have the ability to actually carry out their vote. The same way I noticed you, you didn't carry out their votes on things like terminating debate. Um, they, they're not here to, to have a say in that. And to be honest with you, given this kind of unusual compromise, I don't think, from my understanding of it, I don't think you should um, carry out their votes on 
articles that they did not see in whole or they did not, I guess, attest to voting unless they, I mean, maybe they, if they attested to voting for the article or the article as amended this way or the article as amended that way, that would be something else. And if they have done that, maybe it's different, but it just feels a little, a little wrong, even in a year when we're making some compromises, it feels a little wrong to carry somebody's vote forward for something that they have not been consulted on the details of. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ford has a point of order and let's uh, close voting at this point. Mr. Ford. Hi, I forgot to withdraw my point of order after you answered me earlier. Sorry about that. Thank you very much. Uh, Thomas Michaelman. Mute. Um, it's clear, Mr. Moderator, that if the wording that you were given to provide a yes or no vote for is not exactly the same, you should not be putting in a vote for them. And yes, you can. Uh, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to. But I'm going to vote as I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a statement. Excuse me, you're going to let me finish? Yes, but I, everyone has the same point, sir. Go ahead, finish. Yes, I, I'm going to make it stronger. It's not in your purview. You don't know what they're going to do. You should not be voting for them. I'm not voting for them. I am reporting their votes as they reported them to me. I they do did not, not do that. Well, sir, I hear what you're saying, and I'm going to make a statement. I'm going to report their votes as they reported them to me for the rest of the meeting. If they want to contact me in the next day and tell me to not do that, I will do so. But their two votes didn't make a difference in the quantum of vote is 194 in favor and 50 in against a vote motion passed by 80% and as a, a majority vote. So all we needed was 123 votes to pass. So their two votes did not make a difference. If they want me to not give their votes, then they can call me tomorrow and tell me, but I'm going to report their votes as they requested that I do so. Ms. Barron has a point of order. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, Ms. Barron. Sherry Barron, Precinct 7. Um, I really appreciate your position, Mr. Moderator, and I don't know if um, it makes any difference to express that at least one of these people does not have a computer and doesn't have access to it and can't share one of ours because obviously he would need his own uh, portal. Besides, with COVID, I'm not sure you know anyone would want to be sitting next to someone else this closely. So, I I I know it's not completely pure democracy here, but I don't think there's another better method to do it. And if someone can suggest one, I guess we you could consider that. But I just wanted to make that clear that this these are people I only know one of them who's not uh, staying away or not joining us for any reason other than he does not have access. Thank right. you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Ms. Barron. And then Mr. Um, Jordan Weinstein has a point of order. Yes, uh, Jordan Weinstein, Precinct uh, 21. Um, I. Uh, agree with the moderator's uh, position on this. If there is no bylaw governing, governing absentee voting, then I would imagine for this particular case you know, on this evening, and maybe for the duration of this particular town meeting, that it's the moderator's discretion on whether or not to vote. And the way to handle this would be to change the rules for future uh, town meetings, either through a uh, 
uh, a warrant article or some other administrative procedure. But in in uh, in the absence of any governing legislation, I think we're uh, John Leone is doing the right thing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weinstein. Okay. Um, Mr. Diggins has a point of order, uh, but if we get back to the um, business at hand, the motion, the amended article did pass by 80%, 194 in the affirmative, 50 in the negative, and that's a vote, and I so declare it. Mr. Diggins, what's your point of order? Thank you, Ms. Moderator, um, Leonard Diggins, Precinct 3. I, I understand where um, how people feel about uh, the uh, vote taken on an amended uh, article. I mean, if I were had put my vote in and it was amended, I might be concerned about uh, how that vote was recorded. And I think in the case where people have the ability to watch um, ACMI, eh, they then would also have the ability to call in and register that they, they wanted their vote changed in the case of have, having listened to debate. So I suggest that we make that offer to the folks, for the people who do have the ability to, to watch the proceedings on TV. Thank you, Mr. Well, Moderator. I gave both of those folks, uh, Ms. Ms. Kropelka and Mr. Leonard, they both have my cellular telephone number. They are free and have been free to call me if they wish to tell me to do something else. Well, thank you, Ms. Ryder. You're thank you, sir. Into account. Thank you, bye. Um, are we gonna are we gonna talk? It's Ms. Butler and Mr. Schlickman are I'll take their points of order, but then I'm kind of done with this issue. I want to move on to the next article. Um I've, I've declared what I'm gonna do, um, and then we're gonna go forward with it. So Ms. Butler, what's your point of order? The point of order is just asking whether there was consideration of putting without um computers on speakerphone and whether there could be provision in the future for um, loaners during town meeting. That's yes. all. Yeah, um, we did consider that. Mr. Leonard declined to take a, 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 a computer. Um, he declined to get a Wi-Fi hotspot. He did not want to have anything to do with computers. And he just wanted to give his votes in advance. And Ms. Kropelka, um, for other personal reasons, didn't want to either. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Schlickman. Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. I'm just wondering what the definition of a point of order is and what is permissible. Yeah, I know. A uh, point of order is I don't understand what I'm voting on. So frankly, uh, this once we got past Mr. Uh, Rierig's initial point of order questioning um, the amendments, and once we got into discussing why I'm casting votes for people, which I did explain up front, we were beyond a point of order, but we were down the rabbit hole, Paul. And at this point, um, I'm ready to close Article Four, move to Article. Article three and move to article four, but it's also five minutes to 10. Um, mm -hmm. We usually take a break at 9.30, but we just spent a half hour talking about points of order. So let's take a five minute break so our Zoom controller and our um, display controller can rest their eyes for a few minutes. Uh, so it, we're gonna- I'm sorry, Mr. Moderator. Yeah. I've been asked to remind you um, if you could please do a vote count before closing votes. I did. Um, okay. The last Sorry. article was 194 in the affirmative and 10, 50 in the negative. Thank you. 80%. So we're going to take a five minute break here and then we're going to resume with Article 4 uh, Amendment Bylaw Minuteman Bikeway Hours. So um, please take a moment and look at that. There is uh, the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen. Select board, I'm sorry. Okay. Are we back? Oh, I wish I had my gavel. So I whack my gavel and say, okay, let's call the meeting back to order. And I 
everyone's back. We're now going to take up Article 4. Bylaw Amendment, Minuteway, Minuteman Bikeway Hours. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Hurd, Chair of the Select Board. This is an article submitted by Adam McNeil and 10 registered voters to amend the bylaw relative to the Minuteman Bikeway Hours of Operation to give the town manager discretion to determine the time the bikeway closes based on current weather conditions. That time cannot be before 9 p.m. The select board voted in favor of this article, 5-0. Second. Moderator. Thank you, sir. Motion to up for it, it's been seconded, although not necessary. Um, Mr. Tremblay wishes to speak. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ed Tremblay, Precinct 19. I, I wasn't really aware that there were hours on the uh, bike path. And I'm just curious, why are there hours on the bike path? It seems to me that uh, that people who, who work late would be needing to use it later than 930. And uh, I'd hate to see somebody get fined 20 bucks just because they were driving home, they're riding their bike home from work later at night. Yeah. I, I, I... You can ask Mr. Heim why we have hours at all, Mr. Heim. Doug Heim, Town Council. I'm not sure I'm the best person to answer what the rationale for the hours are, um, but the town is given a uh, sort of charge to uh, regulate the bikeway, although it's um, technically owned by the MBTA, and we set regulations you know, upon it. Um, I'm not sure what the genesis of this very specific set of hours was other than, you know, the things that you might suspect, which are public safety concerns, um, you know, potentially some, you know, maintenance uh, concerns about the bikeway in order to do certain work um, and the lighting of the bikeway. But uh, from my recollection of the select board, the discussion before the select board, there's a good sense that um, it can be expanded uh, without any serious concerns to any public safety considerations. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Heim. That thank answer you. your question, Mr. Tremblay? Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Tremblay. Um, Ms. Sophie Magliazzo. Yes, hello, Sophie Miliazzo, Precinct Eight. Um, sort of a, along the lines of the, the first speaker, but with a few more questions. I guess my question, I, I seem to find that we have a lot of rules and bylaws um, that aren't necessarily enforced in town. And I have a feeling from what I'm hearing that this might be one of them. Um, and why was this not proposed as just eliminating the hours versus just leaving it up to town manager and Follow up question, Mr. Moderator, is is the town manager's intention to just not have any hours? Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Uh, I, I, I think for tonight's purposes, the furthest I would go is saying that I would set hours in coordination with the Arlington Bike Advisory Committee. Um, if if their advice was to in completely eliminate hours, I would probably feel compelled to come back to town meeting, given that this bylaw, if approved tonight, would have opening hours at 5 a.m. Um, but I, I, I think we would, I what I would imagine would happen is via a dialogue with the Arlington Bike Advisory Committee, and based on times of year and when the sun's going down, we would look at hours that we think expand use and match up with actual use um, that that are safe for people to use. Uh, if I could, Mr. Moderator, I, I do know that historically thinking, thinking about the use of the bike path has evolved. And for a long time, it was the opinion of the police department that if we had hours saying it was open, um, but it wasn't lighted and we weren't policing it, we were creating an attractive nuisance or potentially a dangerous situation for people. But I, as people's commuting patterns have changed and the usage of the bike path has gone up over the years, I think we, we see that usage after dark is more and more common, uh, especially on uh, parts of the bike path closer to Alewife, 
and and we want to again we want to work with the bicycling bicycling community and the commuting community who might walk on the bike path to have access in a safe manner and to not not be people not have people feel like they're breaking the rules if we have a time in place. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chaplain. Anything else, Ms. Magliazzo? Yeah, so just a quick follow up. To the extent that this will not be a, a removal of all times, is the town actually bothering to enforce the times that we're posting? So we don't, uh, Mr. Moderator, I'm sorry. Adam. Yes or no, I, go uh, ahead, Mr. Chaplain. Uh, Adam Chaplain, town manager. So we, we certainly don't proactively patrol the bike path telling people that they are breaking the rule. Um, if, if we were issuing such patrols, we probably wouldn't have the restriction in the first place. Uh, Chief Flaherty could certainly chime in if I'm mistaken. I think if a officer encountered somebody now using the bike path on off hours, they'd probably be counseled or given a warning that uh, the, the bike path was closed during that time of day, but it's not an issue that I'm familiar with as ever issuing citations or penalties for, for using the bike path outside of those hours. Thank you, sir. Ms. Magliasso? Yep, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, John Warden. Uh, John Warden, Precinct 8. Do you hear me? Yes, I can, Mr. Yeah. Warden. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, <clears throat> no, I, uh, uh, my, my, my question uh, was, uh, if the uh, man manager can post uh, the, hour, the uh, I guess, the different hours, but not before 9 o'clock or 9.30, whatever, um, when the pipe pass open, how... How is the public to know about that rule? Are there going to be signs, or is he going to be running around with flyers, or how how, is, how will people know what the hours are if they're not the hours that are in the law and presumably uh, stated somewhere along the bike path? Mr. Chaplin, are you going to post the hours uh, on the bike path or at several spots along the path? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Yeah, I, I think signage along the path stating the hours would make the most sense. Uh, we would certainly make it available on the town website, have it circulated in partnership again with the Arlington Bike Advisory Committee to the bicycling community. Um, but I think signage would be appropriate in, in key locations as well. I don't think we would overdo the signage, but try to find the places where people most regularly access the bike path and make sure that we have signage up to that effect. Thank you very much. Uh, does that answer your question, Mr. Warden? Well, uh, yeah, yes, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, it, it, it does answer my question, Mr. Moderator. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Roderick Holland. Uh, Rotter Collin, Precinct 7. Um, I'm a member at large of, of ABAC, uh, the Bicycle Advisory Committee. Um, and more to the point for this purpose, I'm a long longtime bicycle commuter out to a uh, job in Bedford and back. Um, and by dint of being a software engineer, a lot of, a lot of those hours are pretty late. Um, the a couple of things are worth keeping in mind. One is that the other two towns that the Minuteman runs through, Lexington and um, Bedford, do not, as far as I know, have ours. It's, it's a common carrier route. Um, so if to, to the extent that we have them, uh, it, we're kind of the odd men out here. Uh, the other point is that uh, bicycle light technology has improved a good deal. So it's, it's pretty safe um, to 
ride on the the Minuteman at night. Uh, you know, nine nine o'clock is not any darker or lighter than 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, whatever. I consider this um, article to be a good start, but really we should be thinking about um, doing away with the hours. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Holland. Um, Patricia Muldoon. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Patricia Muldoon, uh, Precinct 20. I'm in support of all of the other comments that I've heard and our advanced documents did point out that Lexington and Bedford don't have any, any hours. And my question is um, perhaps a point of order, I'm unsure um, whether that can be, it can be changed at this point to eliminate the hours altogether. Thank you. You, you would have to table the article till next Monday, write an amendment and get it to us by Wednesday, if you wish to do that. Um, so you would take a proposal to table the article. You would have to take, you would have to make a motion to table the article to a date certain Monday, the whatever Monday is. Um, and we would have to vote on the motion to table. And if it passed, we would table it until Monday, whatever you would do a amendment get it to me before Wednesday. And where does that fit in the order of the events around this article, the speakers and all? They all go away and they come back next Monday when we start fresh. So would that be something I should do now? I don't want you to do it, but it's up to you <laughs> if you want to do it. I'd rather just vote on it, be done with it. And then next spring, have it, after Adam has uh, done his research and come back after talking to the bicycle folks and, and coming up with a good plan of action, tell us what they really want to do. That'd be my preference, but I can't tell you what to do. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, um, then I would propose tabling the article till Monday, Monday. the 16th and 7th, what's that, the 23rd? I think so. Second. <laughs> okay, we have a uh, motion to table. Uh, motions to table, are they debatable? Let's take a vote on her motion to table. So- Mr. Moderator, we have a few point of orders. Yes, we do. Uh, Mr. Rierig, Mr. Schlickman first. Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9, the clarification between a motion to table, which is not time certain, or to postpone, which is time certain. Correct. Good thing someone has town meeting time in front of them, Paul. So we'll go back to her and figure out if she wants to table or postpone to a time certain. I think she wants to postpone to a time certain. And... Mr. Warden is going to tell us if it's debatable or not. Mr. Warden, what's your point of order? Mr. Warden, you can unmute. I guess he, oh, no, no, here, here it is. What's your point of order, sir? There, you hear me now? Yes, sir. Thank you. I, I'm sorry. I actually, uh, the, the point of order was, was raised by uh, Mr. Uh, 
Schlickman. Mr. Schlickman, that the motion, motion to um, uh, motion to table, not debatable, and sits on the table just like Article One until someone moves to take it off. The motion to postpone is, I believe, a majority vote, and it must be to a date certain. Correct. So uh, that's uh, so that that's why I withdrew the point of order, but my with withdrawal was not as fast as your recognition of the fact. And, and if I could just add one fact, that the reason for the nine o'clock hours was when the bike path was first open, which is like 30 years ago or maybe longer, some of the folks who lived near, near there who had a very quiet place with a train going by through a couple times a day maybe, uh, were worried that a lot of people would congregate behind their houses uh, late at night and had, drink beer or smoke pot or something. Like we didn't have pot in those days. Uh, do some something on toward. So so that's why they put that 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 nine o'clock uh, time in there, way way back then. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, Mr. O'Connor has a point of order. Then we're going to take the vote on Ms. Muldoon. I'm going to get back to you to see if you want to do a po postpone or table. Let me Ms. get back to this now. Let's see. Mr. O'Connor. Jim, you have a point of order? There we go. Okay, uh, just a point of clarification, laying on the table is not debatable, requires a two thirds vote. I have town meeting time before me. A postponement to a sign certain is debatable and requires only a majority vote. Ah. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Let's go back to Ms. Muldoon. Um, Ms. Muldoon, do you wish to table or postpone? Mm -hmm. Postpone to a time certain. Okay, that's debatable. So we have a motion to postpone. It's been seconded. Um, anyone want to debate the motion to postpone to a time certain? So let's Mr. moderator, do I call the um, new article forward before we start debating? Yes. Okay. I need to build it if I could have just one minute. Okay. Mr. Moderator. Yes, ma'am. While um, Adam is doing that, could I just remind everyone that if they're interested in viewing the live transcription of this meeting, um, we have uh, in the upper left-hand corner, you can see live on custom live streaming service. If you click that drop down, you can choose view stream on custom live streaming service. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And Mr. Moderator, this is a majority vote, is that yes. correct? Yes. Does this language look acceptable? I used the same bylaw title, notated that it will be postponed until 11.23. Yep. And it is a majority vote. That is, that's perfect. So um, now we're going to have a debate on if people want to postpone that or not. So everyone who was waiting to, to speak under the old main motion, should we clear them out and then start a new list for the people who would like to, to debate whether or not they want to speak to the postponement? So let's hit clear RTS. Okay, so now everybody who wanted to speak has gone away. And if you want to speak to the debate, whether or not we should postpone, Miss um, Zarina Memon wishes to speak to the postponement.
Yes, Mr. Moderator, uh, Zarina Amendment Precinct 21. I, I believe that we should postpone this um, article uh, as is, um, I forgot who was the one that was um, postponing it. Ms. Baldoon. Ms. Muldoon said, uh, because I think our surrounding towns, uh, including also Cambridge, do not have any bike uh, hours. Um, and we're just looking like we're behind times. If we um, don't move forward on this, there's a lot of biking um, uh, bikers out there, especially for commuting, for jobs, uh, for work. And I think it would be just prudent to uh, table this so we could, uh, uh, I'm sorry, not table, but postpone it so we could um, eliminate them possibly if Ms. Baldoon writes this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Mehmet. Um, Gordon Jameson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12. I move to terminate uh, debate on all matters. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Jameson. Motion to terminate debate, Mr. Foskett. Second. Seconded. All right, motion to terminate debate on the um, postponement. So we're going to make a motion to terminate debate on postponement. It's a two thirds vote. And that will open your voting window in the voting portal. So Ms. Wayman will open the raised hands feature. If you have a problem voting, please use raise hand. Otherwise go to your navigate to your voting portal. Click one for yes, two for no, three to abstain and then hit cast your vote. If you're having an issue voting, please use raise hand back in the Zoom portal. So you should be in the voting portal right now. It's a two thirds vote to terminate debate. 173 votes have been cast, 71 are still outstanding, 50 outstanding. Please go ahead and Mr. Michael Quinn has a point of order. Mr. Quinn, what's your point of order? Michael Quinn, Precinct 10. Mr. Jameson's motion was to terminate um, debate on all matters. He, did no, not move to terminate. he moved to terminate debate on the postponement. The, the, on the motion to postpone. So we're terminating debate on the motion to postpone, not the main motion. Because if, we, if we're going to terminate debate, then we're going to go ahead and vote to uh, postpone or not postpone. And then we'll go back and decide what to do after that. Okay, that, that, that is not what he said. I'm comfortable with your reinterpretation of what he said and, and doing it in this way. I just wanted to be clear on what was going on here. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Okay, 15 people has, have not voted yet on the motion to terminate debate. Susan McCain. Elizabeth yeah. Dre has her hand raised. Okay. Ms. Dre. I'm sorry, I withdraw, I withdraw that. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Well, thank you. We have nine members who have not yet voted. Um, James O'Connor, Theodore Peluso, Robin Drack, Michael Brown, Lauren Boyle, Ann Elhurt, Samantha Dutra, Nada L. Nui, and Naomi Greenfield. Greenfield. Oh, those last three have not been active in a while. If you guys could please vote, we're going to give you 15 seconds. Five, four, one. Okay, 
Let's close voting. Let's see how the motion to terminate debate did. Motion to terminate debate passed 94%. It is 222 in favor of terminating debate and 13 against. So debate is terminated. That brings us to Ms. Muldoon's motion to postpone until a date certain, 1123. I'm going to run through the screens once. Now, this is a um, a motion to postpone, Adam. So we could just go to a um, new. Excuse me, Mr. Moderator. Yeah. It's been requested that you restate the vote now before voting begins. Okay. We are going to take a vote right now to postpone debate on postpone the article till 1223. That's the vote we're gonna be taking right now. This is her motion to postpone until 1123. So voting to postpone debate till 1123. Just, Mr. Moderator, I'd just like to confirm again that this uh, title looks accurate. Vote, vote to postpone, yeah. Thank you. Yes. So postponing Article 4 till 1123, going to enable voting. Ms. Wayman can open up the Zoom hands if someone has an issue with voting. And otherwise, town meeting members, go back to the voting portal, refresh your screen if necessary. One for yes to postpone, two for no to continue the debate tonight. Uh, and then cast your vote. So if you want to postpone till next Monday, please vote yes. If you want to continue to vote, debate and vote on this article tonight, vote no. Two hundred twenty-two members have voted. We have twenty-two who have not voted as of yet. Any of those twenty-two are having issues? Uh, Patrick Hanlon has his hand up. Yes, I have an. I have hit. I've hit the uh, button for the vote and cast your vote, but the vote hasn't been recorded, and I am. It's shaded out so that I'm no longer able to make it. To make it work, it's just keep. Try refresh your screen, Patrick. Okay, I did it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thirteen members have not voted yet. Um, Robert Tossi, Ted Peluso, Robin Drack, Sylvia Dominique, Domine, Dominguez, Alia Atlas, Krista Mayo, Christian Anderson, Mary Malek Odom, Stephanie Ford, Weems, Ethan Zimmer. If you guys can please vote, go ahead.
And we're going to give you the 15 second warning. And I'm counting down. And seeing that there are no hands raised on the Zoom, I'm going to close voting. And the motion to postpone passes 57%. So the article is postponed to 1123, 134 votes in the positive, 101 in the negative. And the positive vote, yes and no. So that postpones Article 4 till next Monday, the 11th. So uh, Ms. Muldoon, I would suggest that maybe you contact uh, Town Attorney Mr. Heim and he may work with you to revise your motion. Article 5, that brings us to Article 5, as soon as we run through these screens. Article 5, Home Rule Legislation. Amendment Fossil Fuel Infrastructure. Okay, we have, of course, a recommended vote of the board of the select, the select board on Article 5. Uh, I think Mr. Um, uh, um, excuse me, Mr. Hurd. Yep. Did you wish to speak to this? Yep, briefly. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Hurd, Chair of the Select Board. This is an article authorizing the Select Board to file home rule legislation as recommended by the Clean Energy Future Committee to amend the town bylaws to regulate the installation of new fossil fuel infrastructure in new residential and commercial construction and major renovations. The purpose is to take firm action to reduce dependence on fossil fuels and reduce pollution in Arlington. The select board voted in favor of po positive action four to zero with Mr. DeCourcy recusing himself from the discussion and the vote. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, Hurd. Uh, Patrick Candlin. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I'm Pat Hanlon, uh, Precinct 5, and I appreciate the chance to introduce Warren Article Number 5. In a few seconds, Amos Meeks, the co-chair of Sustainable Arlington and not coincidentally a PhD candidate in physics at Harvard, will present the article to you in a video. I will have about 20 seconds to add after that to add a little additional information. Amos and I will both be available to answer questions and will be joined by Ken Pruitt, the town's energy manager and the chair of the Clean Energy Future Committee, the town body whose recommendation started the process that brings this article to you today. Thank you, sir. That's our first example of a video. Hello, my name is Amos Meeks. I'm a member of the steering team of Clean Heat for Arlington. And today I want to tell you about Warrant Article Number 5, which asks to file a home rule legislation that would allow the town of Arlington to create a bylaw amendment that would prohibit fossil fuel infrastructure in new construction and gut renovations. First, some background on this bylaw. So our goal is to reach 100% clean energy by 2050. And this is mandated by both a state law, the Global Warming Solution Act, which commits us to reduce our emissions by 80% by 2050. And in 2018, when the Arlington Select Board voted to set a goal of net zero by 2050. Fortunately, the recipe for reaching 100% clean energy is relatively simple. We electrify everything and we green the grid. So if we look at Arlington's total emissions, we see that the vast majority of our emissions, about 60%, are 
come from buildings, residential buildings and industrial buildings. And of this, the vast majority of this is space heating. So we want to focus space on space heating as a place to start. Fortunately, electric solutions for space heating exist in the form of heat pumps. Heat pumps are very different from electric resistance heaters that you might um, think of, which are expensive and inefficient. Instead, they're more like an air conditioning unit that can heat as well as cool. And because they just move heat around, in terms of heating efficiency, they can be incredibly efficient, um, something like 200 or 300% efficient. In addition, cold climate air source heat pumps work in our climate. They're rated to be highly efficient down to five degrees Fahrenheit, and many of them work down to negative 17 or even negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. And it simply does not get that cold around here. And they work as the sole source of heating. In 2017, a large portion of new homes in Massachusetts used a heat pump as the only source of heating and cooling. And even in Arlington, in Arlington, there are many buildings that use heat pumps as their sole source of heating without backup heat. Heat pumps are also affordable. So this study in 2018 modeled a house um, being installed with gas and electric air conditioning compared to a, a house using an electric air source heat pump and uh, heat pump hot water heating. And what they found is that the installation cost differed by less than $1,000, which in the case um, that they were looking at of a large single family um, house, newly built, con newly constructed house, this difference, cost difference shown in this red slice here is tiny compared to the overall value of the house. In addition, they found a small difference in annual operating cost, but again, for a new 3,000 square foot home, if you look at the monthly expenses, and compare that difference, which is this red sliver at the top here, it's pretty much negligible. So in the case of these large new, new construction single family houses, the difference in cost ends up being more or less a wash. But of course, some people can't afford to pay anything at all. Fortunately, affordable housing is already leading the way on heating electrification. These are some examples of buildings um, outside of Arlington that use heat pumps as their sole source of heating and cooling. But even within Arlington, all of the affordable housing construction projects that are being planned or built by the Housing Corporation of Arlington use heat pumps as their sole source of heating and cooling. And this is often because for the sort of um, high density, high efficiency new construction being built for affordable housing, heat pumps are just already the most economical option. So to get into what this bylaw actually proposes, we would prohibit new fossil fuel piping in new construction and gut renovations. This would not affect existing buildings that are not undergoing some kind of uh, gut renovation. It would not affect kitchen renovations or other sort of renovations that are not literally stripping the entire inside of the building down to the studs and rebuilding it. And it would not affect additions. We also include a number of practical and common sense exemptions. This bylaw would affect only the customer side of um, the fossil fuel piping. All gas cooking appliances are exempted backup generators are exempted. Since it deals with fossil fuel piping, it would not affect uh, propane fossil fuel cooking, such as uh, outdoor grills. Um, hot water for large buildings is exempted due to uh, technical reasons. Um, and in addition, research and medical facilities are exempted also due to technical reasons. And of course, uh, repair um, of existing and unsafe piping is exempted. And to be clear, this only affects fossil fuel piping. So any modifications can be done to the water side of a water heating system without this bylaw coming into effect. However, this may not um, account for all cases. And in, so in order to avoid any sort of undue expense or burden, um, anyone can seek a waiver for the bylaw. And the waivers would be uh, granted by the building uh, inspector, potentially with consultation with town staff and local energy experts. And finally, as a quick clarification, the reason this needs to be a home rule petition is due to conflicts with existing state law. So over the summer, the Attorney General, Maura Healy, found for a similar bylaw in Brookline that while she uh, strongly supported the policy of this bylaw, um, it does conflict and is preempted by existing state laws. However, home rule petitions are a very common way to deal with these kinds of, kinds of conflicts, as you can see in Articles 11 through 15 of this special town meeting. So with that, from me and everyone else at Clean Heat for Arlington, uh, we hope that you will join us in supporting Warrant Article Number 5, and we would be happy to answer any questions that you might have.
Mr. Moderator, if I can just do the last 20 seconds. Yeah. Uh, most of you, most of the members today received an email from Clean Heat for Arlington earlier today, linking to a new study of the economics of electrification in a number of cities, including Boston. The new study shows a much narrower gap between gas and electric co in operating costs than the two-year study that Amos discussed in the video. Um, the new is dated from last October, and we did not really focus on it until uh, after the video was made. Uh, but the difference, according to the new study for major from 2020, is about 3% or 10% or a month instead of the somewhat larger figure that uh, is talked about in the video. That said, we're ready to rest, and, uh, and uh, Ken and Amos and I would all be available if there are questions uh, to attempt to answer them for you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. If there's nothing further. Um, called Jim DiTullio, James DiTullio. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I'm honored to speak tonight in favor of Article 5 as a town meeting member and an appointed member of Arlington's Clean Energy Future Committee I urge the strong endorsement of this article by town meeting tonight, which is consistent with the Clean Energy Future Committee's support for the article. Uh, you've heard from the article's sponsors about its details, who it will affect and how it will do so. And my objective tonight is not to repeat what's already been said or to wade into the specifics of the article, except to say that it's been an exceptionally researched, studied and expertly drafted article representing the hard work of many dedicated Arlingtonians over many months. Uh, the article was drafted with precision and care, and I think it strikes the right note between its environmental ambitions and real world practicalities. Um, what I do want to speak to tonight is why this article is so critically important for town meeting to support at this moment in time. You know, one of the tired tropes of climate change deniers in recent years has been the opening phrase, well, I'm not a scientist, as if, you know, sort of saying, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know about, I don't know if climate change is real. Well, I'm also not a scientist. And that's precisely why I trust the scientists and researchers who've dedicated their lives to studying and documenting the climate crisis. Their research is undeniable. Our planet is sick and getting sicker by the day. And we're nearing the climate tipping point. And each day that we fail to act in any big or small way is not just a missed opportunity, but also brings us one step closer to a point of no return. And against that stark backdrop, we as leaders of Arlington's town government must take every available opportunity presented to us to do whatever we can to stop the del deleterious effects of climate change. To that end, the Clean Energy Future Committee, of which I'm a member, has been working diligently since 2018 to map a plan for Arlington to reach net zero carbon dioxide and greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. The net zero plan being developed by the CEFC relies on a three-part framework, make buildings more energy efficient, electrify everything, including buildings and transportation, and green the grid so that everything we've electrified is powered by clean electricity. Article five is absolutely necessary to the success of that plan, because let me be clear, every future building constructed that relies on fossil fuels will be in direct conflict with the net zero plan and the 2050 goal. Many people often think of 2050 as some far off date. It's, it's not. Certainly not when we have a task in front of us of the magnitude of reaching net zero. The decisions, even the small ones that we're making today will have major repercussions for the next 30 years and will affect our ability to reach the 2050 goal. Think about it this way. We should not and simply cannot be building new buildings at this point in time in 2020 that are reliant on fossil fuels when those buildings have multi-decade lifespans. To do so is the equivalent of hobbling your leg right before you attempt to complete a marathon in record time. It just won't work. I realize that this article's future rests on a home rule petition, which became a necessity in light of recent opinions from the Attorney General's office. Arlington has the opportunity to be in the vanguard of this burgeoning movement. Although Arlington and Brookline are the first towns to push this issue, several other towns are close behind. I expect that in two years time, dozens and dozens of cities and towns will have joined the movement and filed their own similar home rule petitions on this issue. 
there's going to be strength in numbers and numbers of that size will assuredly get the attention of Beacon Hill leaders to either act on the petitions or take statewide action on their own. We've seen a similar strategy with plastic bag and polystyrene bans, which are now on the verge of statewide enactment. Arlington can be a true leader on this issue if we act to support Article 5 tonight. So I'll conclude by simply asking you this question. Several decades from now, when your children or grandchildren ask you what you did to turn back climate change and to fight the existential battle of our lifetimes, what are you going to tell them? I, I think it's fair to say that if you support Article 5, you can tell them you began the longest and most important journey for humanity with a single important step in the right direction. Please support Article 5, and thank you for listening to me tonight. Thank you, Mr. Tulio. Um, just to remind town meeting members, please name and precinct when you oh, first sorry. log on. Thank Mr. you. Tulio, precinct 12. Thank you very much. Um, I'm called David Levy. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Dave Levy from Precinct 18 and also a member of the Clean Energy Future Committee. Um, I will be brief because I know the hour is late. Um, so I just want to say that, you know, I joined the committee that uh, helped support this uh, warrant article uh, for your consideration because, you know, a few years ago when I joined the committee, I just kept getting more and more concerned about how every summer felt like it was getting hotter and I was running the air conditioner more and you know, shoveling the snow less. And I remember as a kid growing up in the Boston area, how you know, every once in a while it was a big deal when the family would gather together and sleep in one room where we had one air conditioner running. And now you'd be crazy um, to think that was gonna be a reality going into the summer of 2021. I mean, unfortunately we were just facing every year more and more days of 90 degrees, you know, 90 plus, and it's frightening. Uh, I have two young kids. Uh, they're both in public schools. And I worry about their future uh, when they are adults and what it will look like. And will they be able to do the things that we're able to do or will weather quite honestly prevent it? I, it just, it frightens me uh, to think of the world I'm leaving them. Um, so being a part of this committee has been so exciting because we're able to be practical about what can we do as a town to uh, start to make a change in this situation. Um, and this, quite honestly, we're working on several initiatives. We think they're all very practical. We hope to discuss those in the coming year. But this came before us because other groups were just as concerned. Um, and we realized we could do something now that would help. Um, it doesn't, you know, like we said, if you have gas today in your home, this doesn't change that. Um, if, you know, unless you are planning some major renovation of your entire home, um, assuming the state follows our request, you know, your life will not change. But as we've said, it does send a signal. It does start the process to make change in this regard. I, I do believe that if we are going to improve the climate we live in, we must find ways to stop burning fossil fuels. It's, it's one of the solutions we have to approach. And and this is one I think where, you know, over time we can ring fence the issue and get our arms around it more proactively. And I, I think it'll make a positive impact on our lives and our, our children's lives. So I would urge you to vote yes on Article 5. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions about the Clean Energy Future Committee and what we're uh, up to. And I thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Ed Trembley. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. H. Rumbley, Precinct 19. I had a few questions uh, and uh, a, a couple of comments. My comment is that uh, more than 20 years ago when I worked on electric cars, there was a move afoot back then to mandate them. And thankfully that didn't happen because they weren't quite ready for prime time at that time. You know, here 20 years later, electric cars are have become much better. And you know what? People choose them and buy them on their own. And I would submit that, that this is a, it should be the case with this too. Um, heat pumps are, are further along in, in, their, uh, in their efficiency and, and so on now compared to where electric cars were 20 years ago. 
but who's to say that we aren't going to have something better? Somebody, is, somebody isn't going to invent a better refrigerant or, uh, or some new heating system that's, uh, that's more efficient. And um, this doesn't ban the, the, the piping in the house. You can still have gas heat. And, and depending on who you talk to or when they, uh, or, or who's presenting, you either can or, or, or don't or can't have gas hot water. Um, I know of people who have heat pump hot water heaters and uh, they've commented about how it makes their basement cold in the winter. And uh, so I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure that this is quite ready for prime time yet. Uh, another concern that I might have is that the, uh, the electric grid we have here in Arlington is not the uh, most robust thing in the world. Um, I know that at my house, I used to want, I'm at the end of the, uh, the, the line and when some neighbor up closer to the transformer from me would turn on the air conditioning, the, uh, the, the, the voltage at my house would drop down to uh, less than 100 volts. Well, that trans transformer blew up eventually, and uh, now we have a new one, so it's not quite so bad. But uh, Okay, Ed, circle back to scope. Um, the scope part of this is that I'm not sure that the, the without a major rebuild, that Arlington's grid can carry all the upcoming um, electric devices that, uh, that people would like to plan for this. Um, so I think that we ought to take a, uh, just let right now, let people make their own choices on what they want to heat their homes with. Um, and, I, and I think that as it, once the heat pumps become really good or we have something better, then people will choose them. And and they are they are choosing them now. They're 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 not bad, uh, but the the proponents here had a uh, had a little chart that showed the the cost of of uh, heat pumps versus gas installation. Well, there's a big difference in heat pump cost depending on whether you get a high efficiency one or one that's less efficient. As as you might guess, a less efficient one costs less. And the highly efficient ones are pretty expensive. So um, we do get cold weather here sometimes. And the efficiency of heat pumps is not the best when it's very cold out. So I would say that maybe, maybe a hybrid system where you have both is, is, a, is a good way to do it. But for me, for right now, I think we ought to let people decide what they want to have for heat in their, uh, heat, what they want to heat their houses with. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Trembley. Um, it's 11.59. I can either take one more speaker or we can take a motion to adjourn till Wednesday. So. Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. And we have a motion to adjourn till Wednesday, the 18th. Um, seeing no objections. Meeting is adjourned till Wednesday the 18th, at which time we'll pick up that the speaker list where we left off. Um, we're, we've taken a screenshot of the speaker list so we know who's on it, but we're hoping that the system preserves it um, internally until that point. But I do have a screenshot of the speaker list. So thank you very much. We'll see you Wednesday at 8 p.m. Oh, wait, are they still there? Uh, are there any motions for reconsideration? If anyone has a motion for reconsideration, please use the um, uh, point of order button on the um, voting portal. If you have a motion, a notice of reconsideration, please do so on the point of order on the portal. Otherwise the motion, the meeting is adjourned. Okay, seeing none, we're all good. We can shut it down. Oh, Ian Godsell. Ian, which, so let's uh, promote Ian to see which one he is um, raising a point of order, a um, notice of reconsideration on. Uh, Mr. Moderator, Ian Goodsell, uh, Precinct 11. I was wondering if uh, I could suggest we start at 7 p.m. instead of 8 p.m., seeing as how long this uh, 
debates are taking. Maybe we can get through this uh, in a, two meetings instead of, you know, two more meetings instead of three more meetings. We'd have Thank to take a, uh, we'd have to take a vote on that at the beginning of the next meeting. Sounds, sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Moderator. Okay. So there's no points of reconsideration. Thank you very much, everyone. We can all log off now.